Time for the guz. There's lots to choose from here. It's only a couple of spin again. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Great place, great dish. That's what we're after. Greece. Guyana. 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 I don't even know where that is. There. Guyana. And a mystery board of tea towels. So, a country in the north of South America. Yes. Like touching Brazil, and that's about all I know. Let's have a look. Not where's the dish, but what's the dish? What are we working with? Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, is that a pig's trotter? That's a pig's trotter. That is a pig's trotter. And? Oh, our favorite ingredient. Whenever we've done these A to Z, this crops up an awful lot. I don't think we've ever used this on the channel. No, I think we've only used this on the channel once. So what is it? Is that vertebrae? Similar. It has something through the middle that goes down, and it's the op... It's a coin? Tail? Yeah. Is it pig's tail? Is this all pork? Oxtail. It's ox... Okay, ox I'm glad tail. you got that from... <laughs> yeah, it was a... <laughs> I regret doing it, because I've now got bold. raw meat on both sides of my hand. <laughs> Oxtail, pig's trotter, and some form of beef. Okay, so we've got some brown sugar. Spices, we've got scotch stuff. bonnet. Weary, weary chilies. <clears throat> a sun-dried chili? Am I going to do this? Oh, I don't think so. You're probably going to, no, you're not going to. I did it. Oh, wow, you shouldn't have done that. Like all dried chilies, just Oh my goodness, it goes straight them. in your nose first. It's like. Why did you do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Small, berry shaped chilies. God, they're really fruity. Mm. They're delicious. They're Distinctive oh, tang tomato like. Scoville rating of about 100,000 units. Ha! Which is comparable to a mild jalapeno. It feels like more than that. Oh, it's really nasal here. I know why I know these. They look like little tomatoes, don't they? <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> I was going to grow these on my balcony and then I decided to go for razzmatazz. I wanted something other than the obvious. So I went for razzmatazz instead. Emma's, I'm gonna get straight into step one. We've got recipe steps, we've got information cards. Today we will be making Guyanese pepper pot. Ever heard of that? No, but it must be a stew. Pepper pot, Guyana's national dish. Good. A beloved and time-honored dish in Guyanese culinary and cultural tra traditions. Oh, it's really hard to read when your mouth is full of spice. Your nasal passage it's is offended. Deeply rooted in the history of Guyana, its origins are intertwined with the indigenous communities of the region and the culinary influ influences of African and European traditions. Yep. It's a dish with significant cultural significance in Guyana and often appears at holidays and celebrations. Traditionally eaten on Christmas morning for breakfast. Huh. Wow, that's a good Christmas Merry breakfast. Merry Christmas. I would associate a lot of these spices, clove and cinnamon and brown spice and orange with our own sort of Christmas celebrations. Step one. Oh no. Create your cassari. Peel and process cassava. Juice and squeeze. Boil to a syrup and spice. And then hints for cassari. Think molasses. Yeah. So step one, we know what we're doing. You know what you're doing. Well, you've read it. You know what you're doing as well. Great, let's set up and cook. So what's great Hey, about <laughs> this series is that we haven't used cassava an awful lot on the channel in 13 years, but we have now used it three times in this series alone and we're only at the letter G. <laughs> yeah. But every time I remember having the conversation, I'm pretty sure it's toxic raw. It's got cyanide in it. Don't eat it. And that's why we boiled it for foo foo. Yeah. Then we baked it in the cake. Cook it And out. this time we're going to basically reduce it down to a syrup. So um, we're grating it. We've covered a colander in a muslin. And then basically we're going to squeeze out all the juice and then we're going to boil that down uh, over a high heat. Yep. Oh. Oh. This could take a while. There we go. So my mate Kurt. <laughs> Is he your mate? Said, when you see a job tomorrow that needs lots of doing, I've already done some for you. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Let's cheat that. See, does that make you feel better? So much better. And that, thinking about where we are geographically, look what's settled in the bottom of that. Pure cyanide. It's, <laughs> no, it's very starchy. And it's got cornflower vibes to it. 
You're doing a great job there. I'm going to take this and start reducing it. Thanks. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah. Next, oh goodness me. <laughs> Next step, create the pepper pot. Pressure cook and then reduce to thicken. Hints, think stew. So we knew it was a stew because of the cuts of meat, that's fine. I'm gonna say all of these ingredients Ooh. into a pressure cooker. We've got an orange, so I'm gonna go with orange peel rather than whole orange. Also reminds me when you do really meaty dishes, I think feijoada, also South American, a neighboring country, lots and lots of meat. Um, the orange is a really good kind of digester, digestive. So we're going to essentially boil this in the syrup and additional stock. Pressure cook, I think. I think it's going to have cook. to be pressure cook or a long, slow cook, but... Clearly not traditional pressure cooking, but we want to eat this quick. <laughs> it, it does the same job. <laughs> yeah, It gets absolutely. to the same place. You're the king of chilies. Do you want to just start prepping some... Chop some scotch bonnet, but also we're going to add our weary, weary chilies. We'll use one scotch bonnet and then we'll use a few of the weary, weary chilies because I think they'll be more of the fruity. Oh, we should probably hydrate those. I've hydrated them in my mouth. I can feel them in my guts. They're a lovely shape and size. We reckon five? They, they are really delicious, like a real fruity taste. Okay, right. Actually, right, I'm thinking on my feet here. I'm going to hydrate those in beef stock. I'm thinking for this, you know, this is not fine French cooking. This is robust stews and casseroles, so good, I'm thinking good, good. rustic on the veg, quite chunky on the onion. We'll cook the oxtail and the beef as whole pieces, the pig's trotter, which will give it a wonderful gelatinous, gelatinous texture as it cooks. If we're making lots of casserie, then therefore it's going to be quite a, like a sweet savoury dish, right? Yeah. Box spicy because of these. Do you think this is an all-in-one? Yeah, I think so. The only instruction we've been given is make the pepper pot, i.e. it must all be in one pot, pressure cook, which we can do, but that all has to be in one together, and then it says reduce. So I'm guessing once we take it out, we reduce it down into something that's like thicker, but it all gets cooked together. So make the pepper pot. Should we just put all the stuff in a pot? Yeah. Onion, thyme, scotch bonnet, garlic, orange peel, cinnamon clove. What's known today as cassarique was discovered by the indigenous Ara Arawak people of South America. After being left in the sun, the reduced liquid was found to be a preservative and this was realized to be a useful substance. These communities were adept hunters and gatherers, skillfully employing locally sourced ingredients in their culinary creations. In its earliest incarnation, pepper pot likely constituted a stew compromising game meats, cassava, and an assortment of local herbs and spices. Nice. So I wonder if we're supposed to put the cassava that's grated in there as well. If you're thinking of the hunter-gatherer sensibility, you're using everything you're hunting and gathering. <laughs> 100%, but I wonder if we use that to make some cassava bread instead to dip in our stew. Ooh! Out of us both, which one's the hunter and which one's the gatherer? I'm quite good at gathering. You are quite good at gathering. But I don't know whether I'm very good at hunting. <laughs> These are a lot of effort. Um, and if you, if you cook it this way, fine, because there's like very little meat on them, some skin, and then a lot of cartilage and bone. And it's gelatinous for sure, but it's a lot of work. Change of plan. Slight deviation of plan. We made a pepper pot. The next instruction is pressure cook. But actually, it's going to take so long to come up to pressure um, though actually we wonder whether searing some stuff off and getting up to temperature first might help us, given we also have to wait for our casserie to reduce down anyway. There's a city in Guyana called Cayenne. It's not the Cayenne, do you think? Oh, could, yeah. Could be. I would have thought so, probably. I mean, it's definitely a country known for their peppers and pepper sauce. In this case, we're using Weary Weary Pepper, which sounds a bit like Piri Piri Pepper, but with a W. Ebers! We've been left a bottle of casserie. Do you know, I saw that over there. And I presumed from a distance it was beer. <laughs> oh, no, you don't want to be drinking that. That's what we should aim for. Whoa, that's what we need to make from this. That is molasses, isn't it? In terms of texture and colour. Absolutely delicious. It, it reminds me of treacle, but it is, yeah, molasses. It's just a, like a, a very earthy, bitter sweet. It's bittersweet. Adding in the oxtail, a little bit more fat. A 
And then we go in with our stock into here to deglaze, get all that lovely flavour off, nothing is lost. You're going in with the sugar, we've lovely. Been, we've been giving it. All the veg. And then some cassari. Our deglazed beef stock and weary, weary juice. No idea if searing it off first is the way forward, but we now have ourselves a pepper pot. It smells incredible. Let's get it onto pressure cook for maybe an hour. And in that time, we'll continue reducing that down to our own cassari. The same cassava root that we grated up and squeezed dry, I've just pressed into a dry pan, seasoned up, and we're gonna cook it over a medium heat until it sticks together and colors on one side, and then hopefully we can flip it. So our pepper pot, pressure cooked for an hour and we've let it cool down, strained off. We've reduced the sauce down and now we're gonna pick out <coughs> all the good bits and all the not so good bits. It smells phenomenal. Every bit of oxtail has something like that. Absolute melt in the mouth. It's very fragrant and I think that's in part because of sort of the, the orange and the herbs and the spices, the cinnamon and the uh, cloves, lots of cloves. And these are ah, oh, hot. These are really, really cheap cuts of meat, but they're so flavorful and so nutritious. And whilst it's a bit of effort to slow cook it and then spread it, separate it out, it is, well, I hope so, worth it. Wow. There are some words I hate when we use to describe food, and one of them is deep. Wow, that's deep. deep. Look at the Oh my goodness. It. Spicy, bittersweet. Tangy. That is everything, isn't it? And all of that meat. That orange really comes through in a perfect amount because I don't like putting orange with anything that isn't an orange. And that, I think, is our pepper pot. Sorted version of a Guyanese pepper pot with cassava bread. Comment below. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. Well, it smells incredible. It does, I'm so excited. But shall we find out what the authentic version looks like? Same color, shiny, dark. I think maybe bigger ch chunks yeah. of meat, ours we've kind of broken up a bit more as we've cooked it, but we but could have served whole chunks. Pretty close though. I wish you could scratch and sniff. Me? No, the, the photo, because I feel like this is what sets this apart, the smell of this stew. Let's go for it. Oh, wow. Wow. That's like stick to your ribs good. That instantly, you don't have to, whoa. I mean, it's that, warm. Yeah, that pepperness comes but through. But you're right when you, I mean, you had the whole one just dry, but it's like fruity spiciness. That is like no stew I've ever had in and my life. And even on top of all of that pepper, you've also got that orange and sort of the freshness of thyme coming through. So sweet and you, meaty. Can you imagine having that as for breakfast on Christmas morning? I can now. Yes, please. And that Christmas spices. Yeah. Like the cinnamon and the well, orange. What we would associate as Christmas spices are all over that. And what makes it so deep and dark and rich is that cassari. Yeah. I think there's a Belgian stew that has similar kind of spiced beef, deep, rich profile, but not with that weary, weary pepper, which I think gives it that fruity spiciness. Mm. Yeah, it's so good. That is fantastic. I think that is a job well done, sir. We'll find out in the comments. Let us know how we got on. But thank you so much to those of you who suggested we do this particular dish. Should we spin for H? Let's spin for H. Hong Kong, hungry. Honduras or Haiti? Shall I give it a spin? Give it a spin. Hup! Oh, Whoa. It's such a spin that it's knocked the thing off. Spin again! Oh, what are the chances? There's only two spin agains in the entire wheel. I would be hungry for hungry. Or Haiti. Haiti! We'll take it. Haiti. So if you're from Haiti or know anything about Haitian cuisine, comment down below. Let us know what dish we should be cooking from Haiti. Give us all your tips as well, because we're going to need it.